What I'm about to tell you now is evidence of potential probably accelerated magma accumulation deeper down, which is not good because we have one parameter in the new bulletin that has escalated drastically, guys, and that's not good. Hey everyone, we have to talk about the supervolcano in Naples, Italy, Campi Fligrei, and what we're getting is not good. It's concerning, I have to say. So now we got the bulletin for the month of December, but we also got the new bulletin for the first few days of January 2026. The INGV has released those, and um, yeah, what we're seeing is an escalation. We cannot uh, sugarcoat it, but there's one set of data specifically that is worrying or maybe even alarming. So we'll go through this guys step by step. I'll show you the graphics and then it's already coming to, to you visually that you see what's going on. So, you know, we had these earthquakes like Vesuvius, Campi Fligri, Vesuvius, Campi Fligri. I made it, um, I said it in my last video, um, are they both now starting to do something? Because it was very unusual that Vesuvius would show these large earthquakes and in a cluster swarm and then both at the same time. So I want you to look at this graph here. This is figure one, two from the monthly bulletin from December. And so we see the earthquakes um, on the left graph here. And of course, um, this is the left side is the yearly is the yearly summary of earthquakes. And we see January and then we see February. February was really worrying all of us. It was absolutely escalating several earthquakes above magnitude four. And at the same time as Santorini, by the way, in Greece, also a huge dangerous volcano, caldera, sunken caldera, so to speak. Um, and then it was a little bit better. And then we see the bars coming up again. and. On the right side, we see December, and December had quite a few earthquakes. We didn't have a four in September, in December, but within the last few days, that's January already, but we had 3.1, 2.9, 2.9. Is it gradually curving against that? It likes to do that in the new year, so we have to see. And then they're showing us a map where all these earthquakes were happening, and uh, yeah, they were happening where we expected them to happen, right? In the caldera, in the large area of Campi Fligri, in the water, in Pozzuoli, but most of them, and especially the larger ones, concentrated in the Pozzuoli area, port of Pozzuoli, and the Solfatara area, where we have most epicenters, where we have the Fumaroles, Pischiarelli, also the most likely area where we could see an escalation, a phreatic eruption, for example, that would come without a warning. That is certainly within the range of possible. And then also we see the depth of the earthquakes over the year here in this, in this graphic on the left side. So we see there, most of them are really, really shallow. And we see, of course, February, the dark lines where we have many dots on top of each other. And then we have a little bit of an escalation again, starting from September towards the end of the year. And then we have the same graphic, the depth distribution just for December. Basically, nothing has changed there within the range between zero and, and, and four kilometers with the majority between one and three kilometers depth. That is definitely shallow. And interesting also the distribution of the magnitudes of the earthquakes over the year 2025 on the left side here of that image. We had lots in the micro seismic range, that's the more darker areas, but do you see that we have dots going up? We have dots in the four range and quite a few, which is definitely concerning. And uh, you know, it's also getting quite dark towards the end of the year. We didn't have anything in the four range towards the end of the year. So the question is, what will the new year bring? And on the right side, again, you see the distribution for the month of December. So we had quite a few 
in the magnitude 1.52 range, but also the majority micro seismic range. But the interesting part is um, the cumulative energy, so the energy of these earthquakes combined, and there we see the curve is going up. We see left side from January towards um, basically till September, it's going up. And then from September, it starts going up a little bit less. But the interesting part is in October, the land rise was escalating up to 2.5 centimeters per month and it's remaining that way and i have reported to you about studies that explain we don't always need to see the earthquakes during that land rise although the rocks are cracking i've explained it in the study it's really really interesting so less earthquakes doesn't mean less danger it could be the opposite that video I put the playlist, the Campi Flickery playlist in the end screen. So, but you see the cumulative energy has really escalated last year. And then if we look at December, the curve speaks for itself, right? And then in January now, it has definitely gone up because we had more earthquakes again that were closer to three and even above three. So that's a curve that I think is really, really telling us a lot. And then the next one as well, Frequenza Eventi, the frequency of the events of the earthquakes starting from 2005, because that was the beginning of this crisis, of this volcanic crisis. And then you see 2017, from there it starts gradually and then it starts really, really going up. The highest line, that's February last year, but we're we're coming up there again, right? And then you also, you see the depth of the earthquakes here from uh, 2005 to 2025, till the end of December, 2025. So we see a lot of earthquakes, right? You see how dark, how black it gets. You can't even see the single dots again. And we see it's a little bit more widespread the depth, right? It goes a little bit deeper. And we know, we know since 2024 that they have discovered shallow magma chambers at a depth of roughly 3.9 kilometers. So is that telling us something? That's the big question that we exactly there. Is there something accumulating? And also what we see is the magnitude distribution, which also tells the story. Left side of this image from 2005 till the end of 2025. It's going up and it's getting more. Not only the magnitude is getting up, also the number of earthquakes is rising. It's getting black, it's getting darker. And if we look at the cumulative energy that has been released since 2005, what can we say? Right now, we're in escalation mode in extreme escalation mode if you look at that graph. So it's not slowing down, it's the opposite. Interestingly enough also, it shows us the distribution here of events magnitude 3.0 and larger from 2019. So you see where the clusters are. Pozzuli, Solfatara area, but also some clusters in the water. In the water is never, never good. And also here in bars, the frequency of the events, magnitude 3.0 and larger from 2019 to 2025. Again, same curve. Do you see that? And of course, then they're showing us the depth of these earthquakes. No surprise here. Basically same area. Magnitude, distribution, everything only here, 3.0 and larger from 2019 to 2025. And as we've seen in the previous curves, this is the time frame that starts to get interesting, basically since late 2021. And there we see we have two 4.6. That's absolutely insane. And energy mm -hmm. 
cumulative energy, of course, same thing, is going up. And this, the next graphic that they're showing us um, is also very interesting because they're, they're going back to the 80s when we probably had a magma intrusion, when they started to evacuate, but the magma didn't make it to the surface, but they had a Brady seismic, I always call it not Brady seismic, it's a volcanic crisis. And there you see what was happening there, um, the frequency of the earthquakes, and also the, the black line is the cumulative energy of these earthquakes. God, reading these these bulletins is refreshing my Italian in these PDFs. So um, yeah, very, very interesting. They only have them in Italian. They don't have them in English. And uh, my Italian is good enough so that I don't have to use the translating software or anything. So look at the red bars in the 1980s and then look at the red bars that we're having now. Especially interesting starting um, 2017 and really do you see how much higher these lines go and really do not oversee because it's almost covered by the black line from the cumulative energy do not oversee this really really high high bar that goes up to 600 you see that so it's interesting. In the 80s, it was all more pressed together in a shorter time frame. Now we have over 20 years of escalating time frame. And this is the latest deformation graph that we have here from 2025. Um, you see the last blue bars. This is what it's currently. And it's currently still, it stays there at 2.5. And then they're showing us the graphs just from the other measuring stations. They basically confirm the same thing. And interesting, if you look from the year 2000 till the year 2026, if we look at the, this is the right station, this is their G and S station. We have a land rise starting in November 2005, before we had a little bit of a subsidence, and then it started rising in 2005. Since then, we're over a meter 60. Over a meter 60, that's two steps that you take. This is a lot. Below this graphic shows us what Medusa is measuring. Medusa is measuring in the water, and it confirms the same trend. Every line is a different measuring station. And this is the port of Pozzuoli, the port of Pozzuoli, where we have lots of fishing boats that are lying dry. We have grass growing there in the old port, bushes, but no water anymore because the land is rising that much. Another interesting diagram, and this is where I said at the beginning, um, I think this is concerning, is basic, basically the relationship the CO2 and H2O relationship. If you look at that graph, you see how that escalated. The red dot is the latest measurement that we have. That's why I said this is concerning, even alarming, because what we see there, this could be live before our eyes, a testament or an evidence that there is magma accumulation deep down there that there is magma accumulation and I'll explain to you why. As you see, the, the increase is steady and it's escalating there at the end, right? Um, we have all these signs, all this evidence that this unrest is not going away. We have the land rise, the earthquakes, we've got the Fumarole temperature increase, gas emissions increase, we've got the CO2 to H2O ratio that is increasing. So most of these values regarding gas emission, Fumarole temperature, in the latest bulletin that came out for the week until January 4th, are stable. Stable doesn't mean we don't need to be concerned, but they're stable in the high range. And so that way, the trend of increasing gas emissions is stable, right? So as the land rise is stable right now with 2.5 centimeters a month. That doesn't mean the line is like this. It's a stable curve 
like this. This is what this means. But we have a strikingly high, strikingly high ratio of CO2 to H2O. So what's going on with these fumaroles this, that are these hot vents that we have in the Pischiarelli and Solfatara area? What's going on with the geochemistry in this area? That is what's of interest, what sticks out the most in this bulletin. So we have high gas emissions measured here, primarily of carbon dioxide, like CO2, and uh, water vapor, that is H2O. And then a key parameter for us to look at that, that can tell us what's going on underneath is in this graphic is the ratio of CO2 to H2O. And it is extremely elevated right now. And in the month of December, it has further increased, as are the magnitudes right now. So this ratio that is described here in this graphic, it shows us what's going on deeper down, what processes are happening there. Because carbon dioxide is degassing at high pressure at great depth, while water vapor is released closer to the surface. So a comparatively high CO2 concentration can therefore indicate a stronger magmatic influence or an influence of deep fluids. Yes, the INGV is telling us, yeah, you don't, don't panic. The, something like this can also be caused like without fresh magma, like because of condensation of water vapor underground. Doesn't need to be fresh magma. Yeah, but you know, since all the other parameters are not looking so good, I would not take my chances, right? We, we just don't know. So of course, now they're saying there are no immediate signs of an eruption. And this is with a volcano like that, that could create phreatic eruptions first without a warning. Um, it's not a good thing to say. And we've had many local scientists that said, well, if they're telling you they're closely monitoring it, that doesn't guarantee your safety because they can say, well, there are no, no signs for an imminent eruption until they are. And then pff, the eruption might already happen, right? All the parameters, we have to be clear about that, that we're dealing with here at Campi Flegri are generally far above normal, as you have seen in the curves. And this ratio here in the last graph, this ratio has been rising for a month. So this could really indicate, and I have to use the word accelerated, because that's what it is, an accelerated magma accumulation at depth greater than five kilometers, deeper down. So really, the situation is tense, to say the least. We have this instability at Campi Flegri that doesn't get any better, uh, vice versa. So I'll stay on the pulse of this for you guys. I will keep you updated. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to know what's going on in other areas, hey, choose one of the videos here in the end screen and please like and hype this video. I have lost my voice a little bit. I think I need to take a break. And uh, But definitely, I would love to see you here in the next one. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.